Here is my crash course video on Unit 5 of American History, which is Antebellum America before the Civil War. The first objective is to define elements of American identity through art in the early 1800s. Most of the art in the 1800s promoted nationalism, which is anything that unifies the country or just makes it feel more as one. Some art was the Hudson River School of Art, art <laughs> um, which made the West out to look so beautiful and so pretty. Um, other art could be literature, and an example is The Last of the Mohicans, which was written by James F. Cooper. It was the first American novel, and it was a tale of adventure, romance, and drama. Other than nationalism, these arts promoted like the American dream and what it was really meant to be. The second objective is to describe the influence of American literature on the antebellum period. Some of the literature that was in the early 1800s was books and literature of transcendentalism, dark romanticism, romanticism, and yeah. For transcendentalism, um, the basis of their arguments was that um, machines were not the answer and that we should be based on nature. Some examples are Henry David Thoreau's book Walden, which discovers himself or self through nature. Another author is Margaret Fuller, who wrote Women in the 19th Century, which just meant that women are important in this revolution, though it doesn't heavily depend on nature. Dark romanticism just means like everything is doomed and mankind doesn't really have much going for it. Some authors for this were Edgar Allan Poe who wrote The Raven, Nathaniel Hawthorne who wrote The Scarlet Letter, and Herman Melville who wrote Moby Dick, which is mainly about revenge and how we're all screwed in the end. The third objective is to describe the consequences of the Second Great Awakening. What is the Second Great Awakening? The Second Great Awakening was basically pastors going around the U.S. in tents, basically having these hellfire revivals, which is just dramatic events for the church to try to promote, promote their church and try to get people to join. Some examples of religions that were throughout the Second Great Awakening were the Mormons, whose founder was Joseph Smith, the Shakers, who were basically hyper-Mormons, that wanted abolition of alcohol, no sex, and no slaves. Um, they didn't last very long because of the no sex, which means they could not procreate to create more shakers. Some reform movements also came from the Second Great Awakening, um, like public education. Um, the founder of public education is Horace Mann, who started in Massachusetts in the 1800s. Another reform movement was separating the mentally ill and the imprisoned. Um, Dorothy Dix came up with the idea that there are two different types of people, one that can help it and one that cannot. So she basically created the basis of separating prisons and mental hospitals. And another reform movement is the abolition of alcohol. And Carrie Nation is most popularly known for going around in bars and just of destroying all the alcohol to try to get rid of alcohol in general. The fourth objective is to describe the causes and consequences of the 1800s feminist movement. Throughout the 1800s, women have basically been caught in this cult of domesticity, which means that all of their duties are stuck in the house and all their chores and jobs are within the walls of the house. like. Um, cooking, cleaning, washing clothes, and caring for the children. What came next was the Seneca Falls Convention, which was in 1848, which brought the Declaration of Sentiments, basically saying that men were equal to women and they wanted to be recognized as equals. It was about the same form as the Constitution, and it was just saying that men and women should be treated like equal people, which is common logic today. The impact of the feminist movement led to 
women going out west and having more responsibilities like owning businesses and being in law enforcement and being in politics. And in the west there were no direct gender roles. So men could stay home, women could stay home, and it doesn't really matter. The fifth objective is describe the attempts to end slavery in antebellum America. There were a lot of attempts to achieve a middle ground, and one of them was stopping the importation of slaves in 1808, which basically means all the slaves are just going to stay in America and not come from slave ships from Africa anymore. Um, another attempt was to try to send slaves back to Africa to reduce the slave population, which basically created Liberia, a country with deported slaves. As the idea of abolishing slavery became more popular, more slave resistance started to come up. One example was Nat Turner's slave revolt, which was a revolt on a smaller scale, relatively. And he murdered the family of his owners. And the revolt is stopped, and the slaves' codes got very expanded. <laughs> um, all states had militia to try to stop the slave revolts that were happening at the moment. Saved not saved she saved many slaves from being caught and returned to their abusive owners with the slave codes all being really reinforced the underground railroad started to come up as an idea the underground railroad is a hidden network of safe houses with quilts and flags to try to help the slaves identify which houses were safe for them to run away to when they did run away harriet tubman was a big impact on this. She saved many slaves from being caught and returned to their abusive owners. A famous abolitionist was Frederick Douglass, who was a former slave, and he educated himself and actually got to the point where he was giving speeches on abolition, and he even got the chance to meet Abraham Lincoln to talk about the abolition of slavery. Other abolitionists were Sarah and Angelina Grimke. They grew up in a slave trading family, and when they realized how bad slavery was, they became Quakers and abolitionists in the process. And that wraps up Unit 5, so now we're going to move on to Unit 6.